Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordine, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Greater Glory. My name is Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're High Tower Ministries. And we have a wonderful word for you today that will empower and inspire you to press into all that God has for you this year. We are going to talk about releasing the anointing in the kingdom of God through your words and mm. prayers and declarations. Come on. You know, it's a time of the mouth. And the enemy, the enemy wants to cover our mouth right. so that we will not speak a decree or a prophetic declaration against him. And, you know, we're going to get into our word tonight. We're going to start out with Matthew 16, 13 through 19. It says, when Jesus came into the coast, of, into Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples this question. What are people saying about me, the son of man? Who do they believe that I am? And they answered, some are convinced that you're John the baptizer. Others say that you're Elijah reincarnated or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But Jesus, but, you know, he said, do, but who do you say that I am? Mm-hmm. You know, he kind of leaned in and he asked, he said, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter spoke up and he said, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. God replied, you are favored and privileged, Simon, son of Jonah, for you didn't discover this on your own. But my father in heaven has supernaturally revealed it to you. I give you the, the you know the name Peter, mm. a stone, and the rock. This and this rock uh, will be the the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church, my legislation, like like legislative as, assembly. We're, yes. you know, we're going to be uh, you know, governing with God. You know, is what he's talking about here. And the power of death will not be able to over overtake it, overpower it. I will give you keys of heaven's kingdom's realm to forbid on the earth that which is forbidden in heaven Mm -hmm. and to release on the earth that which is released in heaven. And that's out of the the, uh, Passion Translation. Amen. Amen. You know, as sons and daughters, we have been given governmental authority and we are commanded to forbid or to permit things on earth. That's right. So we see God's originals, original intent for his ecclesia has not changed. This intent is for us to exercise dominion by declaring God's word into the nations. And it's so important for us to not lose sight of the fact that we are in Christ. Come on. Amen. And he is the king. And this is his kingdom. It's his kingdom. Yes. And when Jesus began to minister, he didn't start out by talking about his church. Mm-mm. You know, he established his kingdom first. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end of his time in the flesh here on the earth, he mentioned his church. That's right. He mentioned so, the church. He talked about the church. Absolutely. And John the Baptist and all the disciples they all preach the gospel and the kingdom. Amen. John the ba- Baptist preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's right. Right? And that means it's within reach mm-hmm. and it's here now. That's right. Amen. We have to understand kingdom mm. and we need a kingdom mindset yeah, to be able to really move into what God has for the, for us all in this time. Yeah. You know, you can't truly understand what real church is until you understand kingdom. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the church is part of his kingdom. And the, and the world right now is in a terrible mess mm-hmm. because we have not under, you know, stood up and taken dominion over our promised land. That's right. You know, we, we have been given power to pull down strongholds and the principalities and high places. And we have to be more interested in what the spirit of the Lord is saying than what man, the devil, or the government is saying. Come on. That's Amen. right. Yeah. Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, mm-hmm. right? So we have dominion, ma- a dominion mandate here, and the great commission to go into all the world and disciple nations. And to do this, we must have kingdom worldview. That's right. Yeah, and it's the enemy that wants us to be ignorant and passive. 
Jesus did not come to start a kingdom that would be dormant for 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. That would make no sense. It would make no sense. He expects his kingdom rule and reign to be active through us right mm -hmm. now. Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and the earth. And it is not for the, it's not future tense only. It's for right now. Christians don't debate on whether or not Jesus is the king in heaven. But what is misunderstood and held in question in the minds of many is that he's king over the earth. Yes. And he absolutely is king over Come the earth. Come on. People try to, you know, uh, put it at, uh, try to dispensation, dispensationalize. Mm -hmm. He tried to put it like far off. Right. In the future, his authority over the earth and put put it somewhere way in the future, you know, only and that, you know, that he doesn't reign now, but he is absolutely reigning now yeah. because that's completely incorrect. Right. And the word states that in Matthew 28, 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. You know, he spoke that word in, in the present tense. So that means that he is king of heaven. And he's king of the earth right now. Right now. So how does it work? It's supposed to work through his kingdom church, his, his, the church, the body of Christ. Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. So in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 23, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us for who believe, according to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ? When he raised him from the dead and sent him at his own right hand, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet right. and gave him to be the head over all things Amen. to the church, which is the, his body, the fullness of him. That fulfill all in all. That's right. Come on, church is to be Christ's ruling body on the earth. That's right. Yeah? Amen. Romans 8, 17 says, and if children, then heirs, mm. heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. That's right. Right? If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may all be go also glorified together. We're, we are identical heirs with Christ right now. And in his name, we are to rule on the earth mm -hmm. right now in mm -hmm. his name. So, yes, we are going to rule with him through eternity, but we need to reign with him now as yes. well. Yeah. We should not you know, put it off into some faraway future time that we get to reign with God. Mm -hmm. We should be taking that up now. Right. And, we, and the church has been too quiet. That's right. You know, Jesus preached kingdom. Come on. And we need to be preaching kingdom. It is the will of the living God to preach the gospel of the reign, the rule and reign of God and, and the governmental power of the living God yes. working in and through his ecclesia. Yeah. You know, Christ declared the kingdom before he introduced his church. His, his first sermons had to have been, you know, thought through very carefully. Jesus was brilliant and no one could can communicate quite like Jesus. Mm -hmm. No one had ever spoke like him with such authority and no, and he had no doubt. There was no doubt in his first sermons right out the gate. He knew exactly who he was and what he's called to do. That's and right. Then, yeah. And what he was designed for. Yeah. And his and his messages were very clear with clear purpose. Amen. And let's take a look at Matthew chapter four, verses 23 through 24. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick. And whatever kind of their kind of their sickness or disease, or if they were demon possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. He healed them all. Come Amen. On. Jesus made a tour through the whole of the whole of Galilee, preaching the gospel of the reign, the reigning, the ruling of, of Christ mm -hmm. in the earth. Amen. Of, Amen. of the Lord in the earth. And the church has preached many things that are in the word. We preach all types of stories in the Bible and different things. But the church has, has, you know, has not really been preaching the gospel of the reign, the dominion rule and the governing of the kingdom of God as it should be. Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mountain and it began with Matthew 5, 3. 
In the New Living Translation, it says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Mm -hmm. And it ended with verse 10 saying, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right for the kingdom of, of heaven is theirs. He begins and ends with the good news of the kingdom. Come on. In chapter six of Matthew, he preaches on prayer saying in this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, the Greek speaks it as a declaration, and that is how we should speak it as well. Kingdom come, kingdom come to our region. Now, right? yes, King, come, come kingdom now. of God, come now, manifest and reign over this territory. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, then Christ preaches in Matthew 7 12. What what is simply we call the golden rule: mm -hmm. do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say that you can enter you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. That's right. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for many many who choose that way. But the the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, mm -hmm. and few ever find it. That's in Matthew 7, 13 through 14. You know, the kingdom way is a narrow way. Yeah. You know, this world's trying to, to lie and say that it's it's not a narrow way. It's a very narrow way. Mm -hmm. And um, and you're responsible for what you know. And um, he's not talking about something that's far off in the future. This is your lifetime. You know, this is in your life. This is yeah. here now. Amen. Yeah, amen. And, um, and he's talking about the kingdom way right now. In your life, in him working through your life yeah. to touch many people. Amen. Matthew 7, 27 through 23 in the New Living Translation. And uh, this is out of the 1996 edition. States, not all people who sound religious are really godly. They may refer to me as Lord, but they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey my Father in heaven. It's whether they obey. It, is, it goes on to say, on Judgment Day, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. You know, if you do things that are unauthorized, you are apostate mm. and you're you're sent away from him. In other words, you're a phony. OK, so God, you've got to obey God's word and you've got to do it the way God says to do it. So you can't be part of his kingdom and and do unauthorized things. Come on. You no, know, you can't or, or ordain homosexuals. It's unauthorized by the kingdom of God. It's unauthorized by the word of God. You know, you can't preach that once saved, always saved, and that no one is going to hell because that's unauthorized. That is not in the word. That's not what God said. And if you can't enter the kingdom of heaven, there is only a one other place for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we must all speak the uncompromised word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You cannot suppress what, what it says. And if you do, he'll send you away. Come it's on. very serious. Scott says narrow is the way. And Jesus began his uh, Galilean ministry by preaching in Matthew 9, 35. It says, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Why would he be preaching the gospel of the kingdom if it wasn't for the future? Come, come on. He was setting up his kingdom. Yeah. You know, amen. Especially when he demonstrated the kingdom of heaven, you know, was among them by healing the sick and the disease. Come on. That's right. It was for right now. And he later sent his disciples out to do the same thing. And 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 that was where, where, where they were where they were to preach. That's right. You know, in Matthew uh, 10, 7 and 8. It says, and as you go preaching, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely have received, freely give. Amen. The kingdom is at hand. Mm -hmm. It's near you, right at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. you, you can touch it, he's saying, right? Reach for it. You can demonstrate it. You can demonstrate it by casting out demons. Amen. Come on, right exactly. now. That's right. Heal the sick right, right now. now. This this message you know, in the Bible states that tell them that the kingdom is here. Mm -hmm. You know, the the J.B. Phillips 
uh, the translation states that, that this way, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven has arrived. It's arrived. It's arrived. Yeah. It arrived before, you know, it arrived there in that day, but it has not, it did not get sucked back up into heaven. The Holy yeah. Ghost did get sucked back up into heaven when Jesus yeah. was ascended to the Father. Mm -hmm. He came up and set up a kingdom that would be everlasting. Amen? Yeah. You know, and, and the kingdom was not set up to, to just depart there. No, he set up this kingdom. And he also said, you are ambassadors of Christ. And you're to occupy until I come again. Come on. He, he, he said, I'll send you another comforter. And you need not that any man teach you, but the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Get Yet faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God does instruct us, do not forsake the assembly of the saints, even more, the even the more don't, don't forsake the assembly of the saints when you get closer to the, the coming of the Lord. That's right. But when you're asking for deeper revelation, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. And all you have to do is seek God. Amen. Amen? Over 2,000 years ago, Christ told us to declare the kingdom of God is here now. Mm -hmm. And then the book of Matthew continues with one parable after another concerning the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God uh, is like. Mm -hmm. And he in insisted that they renew their minds with, with that worldview. Over and over, he said that he came to plant a kingdom on earth. A kingdom that cannot be shaken, a kingdom that he said will never come to an end. And we we are made in his image, and, and he is the, he is the ruler, he's the governor, amen. He's our king. So the you know, the so the, the natural, you know, the nature, I'm sorry, the nature to govern and to plant into our you know, into our day, he he does it, he he puts that in us and our born-again experience. It becomes part of our spiritual DNA. We are made to be a governor governing body, his ecclesia. Mm -hmm. So what does ecclesia mean? In the Strong's, it means to be called out and assembled for his purpose. The word ecclesia first occurs in the fifth century. It's 500 years before Christ. So that's what it's mentioned. So what does it mean? You know, really the ecclesia was a, was a political term. It wasn't a religious term. And, and we've got to understand what this word means. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a word describing those with final say in Greek government. The definition of ecclesia in, um, in the classical Greek is an assembly of citizens summoned by the town crier to legislative assembly to the, to, at the gate. At the gate. Mm -hmm. And the gate, of course, is where people are of authority sat. It would it would be like where our city buildings are. It would be like where our mayor's office is, our city council do business. OK, that's the gate. Like Washington, D.C. would be called a gate to the United States of America in biblical times. Citizens um, 18 years of age could could show up and, and answer that call to uh, to come for the ecclesia to come and to come together and assemble and pass legislation. Always by raising of hand, the ecclesia's uh, fear of of, um, com uh, uh, of their governing power, basically their competence, included decisions on on suggested law and final decisions on new laws. Mm -hmm. The final decision of all law was left to the ecclesia. Don't think Jesus didn't know what he was talking about when he said, my church is to have final decision on laws in this nation or reign. He said it. That's right. He called us his ecclesia. So we've got to understand what it means. Something else that they, what else are they, um, they, they were, they were to do. So they oversaw appointments to official positions. Amen. So voting was for the magistrates or for those who held an office. It was the ecclesia's responsibility to vote for those who held office. Both internal and external policies in the region included contracts, treaties, war, and peace, and financial matters for the region. They were all decided by the ecclesia. Yeah. It was not conceivable that Jesus did not know what the word ecclesia meant when he used it. He understood it very well. It, it, it is the, the enemy that does not want the church involved in what God has always intended us to be in the middle of government, education, city council and town hall meetings. That's right. The ecclesia would rule on cases of treason. It could summon for its army to assemble for war. The ecclesia ruled on societal and, and cultural matters for its geographical location or territory. 
Jesus intended for his ecclesia to set the culture standards for a region. Mm -hmm. He understood what it meant. Yes, Come on. He did. The ecclesia even chose by raising of hands who would sit at the high court of Athens, which is equivalent to our Supreme Court today. Notice that the ecclesia was not the high court. It was an assembly of people, but it decided who would be on the high court, and it, re it remained the final authority. For example, the high court could investigate corruption or treason, but then the evidence was taken to the ecclesia for sentencing. sentencing. Mm -hmm. You know, some citizens were required to, they were actually required to be, uh, to assemble when they call for the ecclesia, but many more were not required. Their, their uh, presence was really purely voluntary. Mm -hmm. And the decisions of government were up to those who answered the call to assemble and rule. Come on. We've got to answer the call. That's right. Amen. That's why we have always encouraged everyone to get out and vote in elections. It is not only our right as Americans to have free elections, but we are commanded of the Lord to show up and answer the call too. Amen. Voting is our responsibility. Yes, that's right. And if you are a Christian, raise your hand and make a decision. Nothing secret. Raise your hand and be seen. Publicly decide. Amen. Yes. And, you know, God says, you know, you're the redeemer of the Lord, say so. That's and, right. And God's calling you forth to, to, with your responsibility to, to, to set the righteous standard in the land. Amen. This is not a time for us to be quiet. We need to call call it call it the way it is. That's right. Right and wrong. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Athens was also a gateway where philosophies were debated. Leaders have said, uh, you know, that today's media is as Athens high court, you know, that's where philosophies are being debated. And this is very insightful because the people on the media are, are now the ones who are spinning the news for philosophies. They are trying to decide who holds official positions and high offices, and they promote ungodliness, uh, you know, just godless ways and all, all the while telling the church to shut up and sit down. And, and they've been they've been and are still in the process of trying to steal all the authority of the church mm -hmm. that's been given to us by God. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need to understand the kind of authority an ecclesia held in order to fully grasp what, what Jesus meant when he used the word. The Greek city uh, states, the, the Greek city states, you know, they, they found their government, when they found their government had been uh, corrupted, they, they got into corruption or or they were too oppressive, they would call for the ecclesia and an assembly outside of the civil authority of, of that city. And, and if, if enough people came out and refused to accept the existing uh, centralized civil authority, that government would collapse. Mm -hmm. Due to the ecclesia's authority, civil leaders could be replaced and ensure to ensure the ecclesia's rule and and, and it was that, that it was being enforced. That's right. That's the kind of authority that was in place when Jesus used the word <laughs> ecclesia to describe his church. Come on. Jesus said that his ecclesia would forbid sometimes and pro and some things, and they and that he would permit. They would permit sometimes. They would permit some things. Yeah. You know, there are people that we need to forbid from being holding come on. office come on. come on and there are people that we need to per to permit absolutely and we're the ones that are supposed to be thinking through cultural standards right. right and then raising our vote by voting on those standards it is not biblical to not vote godless politicians have been placed into office because believers sit at home and don't vote and Jesus knew very well what he was saying when he called his church his ecclesia. Yes, amen. <laughs> the, you know, when Rome would conquer a territory, they would send a group of ambassadors, legislators, and, and regulators of culture in, mm -hmm. and they would begin to regulate by shaping the culture, by telling them, here is what the culture is allowed to do. Mm -hmm. They would shape the education. You know, and they're doing that in our day. Here is what what you're you will teach. This mm -hmm. is what you're going to teach. And they administered laws, social standards, and taxes 
So to sum, sum up what Jesus was saying here is this, the kingdom of God's governing ruling body is the ecclesia established by King Jesus to look after his kingdom and to occupy while he is gone. Come on. We're supposed to be the, be ruling right now. Amen. Right. By raising the standard of righteousness, wherever we go, not hiding in a corner, but speaking up for truth and righteous living. The war is won or lost by the words that we are and are not coming forth from our mouth. Amen. Come on. You know, it, it is time to seed the heavens with God's word. You know, if, if we're going to seed the heavens and lay God's word in, into culture's foundations, we must learn, practice, and activate our authority. You know, the, the king's seed that is sown into us, the, the king's DNA, his very DNA that has been transmitted into our spirit at, at the new birth, needs to be manifest inside of us and through us. Mm -hmm. And we need to become who and what we really are. Come on. And we don't need to hide it. That's right. Amen. We are we are under the lordship of the King Jesus, forgiven, re-imaged, and born again into his family. Yes. And we truly are the king's lineage. Yeah. And we are heirs of God. And we are joint heirs of Christ. And we are part of the kingdom of, of the almighty God. And we are expected to reign with mm -hmm. him right now. The church assignment. Let's talk about that for a minute. We cannot represent a king who spoke with power, with wimpy words, mm -hmm. with doubtful minds. We cannot represent him with negative statements from, you know, intimidated thinking. Come on. You know, how are we to face, you know, stand face to face with demons from hell and speak quiet, shy words of compromise? We can't. We can't speak living. We, we can't speak living words of faith and turn around and speak dead words of doubt. That's right. You know, the, we can't have living with the pure word and, and pure water and, and salt water coming out of the same well. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, faith, faith in, in, um, in, you know, you know, doubt should not be coming together. And kings, kings speak with authority. Come we got to speak That's with right. authority. Amen. Right. So to be kings and priests of his household who rule and reign with him in this life, we're going to have to do it with some boldness. That's right. Right. We must declare the word of God with authority. The early church understood this and we need to also. Come on, the prophets and the apostles in the book of Acts operated in bold authority, and their prayer shows their awareness of its importance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at Acts chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, yes, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Come on. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Grant us boldness to make keenly commands and give us confidence to say what he says. Give us boldness to command healings to come into manifestation and miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. We are in a season where we are clearly need to do the word of God. We've got to do the word. Do it. Yes. Not just here, be hearers of the word. We need to be doers of the word. We have yeah. to be doers. Yeah. Allow the Holy Spirit to activate this in you today. Yes. Job 22, 28 says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Come on. Hallelujah. The Amplified Bible reads, You will also decide and decree a thing, and it will be established for you, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. You know, favor and decrees of faith go hand in hand. Hallelujah. So we want to talk to you for just a few moments about the power of your words and um, how you are to pray. You know, when you've got a situation in your life, it is the way you're supposed to tackle it is get into the word of God and find out what God says over that. Mm -hmm. Find out what God says about your promises. If you're seeing something that's opposite of what God has promised you in your life, you've got to find the scriptures and God's word that says that you should be. If you're in, you're you're in, and not in, you're in lack, and you're you have a need, 
You've got to pull the scriptures out that says that you're blessed and that your storehouse is full. That's right. And that you walk in abundance. You got to find. You got to find out what God said. And, uh, and if you if you see sickness in your body, mm-hmm. you need to you need to get into the promises of God in Deuteronomy, the blessings, and say, you know what? Where's the area of my life that I'm not hearken diligently to the word of the Lord thy God? Because God said, if I hearken diligently to the word of the Lord thy God in all the areas of my life and love Him with all my heart, He would not put these sicknesses that He put on the Egyptians on me that's right and, and so you have got to find it in the word and you and instead of speaking what the natural fact is you've got to speak the word of god you know the angels are all around us and they are standing at attention all the angels are around us they're standing and they're waiting for you to decree the word of god over your circumstances that's right. over your situation over your body over your family members he's they're waiting and they go on assignment to make sure that god's word does not return to him void you know they're not just standing there listening for what you're going to say but they do listen to what you say and they do report back to you on you so you got to watch your words you can't be in the, you can't be uh, speaking in faith and and decreeing the thing and then turn around later in the afternoon and say the opposite of what you decreed in faith that's right you can't do that because you can miss out on your blessing you can cancel your blessing out that way you know god you david prayed didn't he pray he said lord be be a watch over my lips be That's a right. watch over me yeah Take a gate over my mouth yeah. amen you know if, if we've got loose lips and we're speaking idle dead words things that are against the promises mm-hmm. of god in our life we need to ask god to help us to zip it come on zip it you need to zip it yeah and you need right. to tell your mate to zip it if he's if he's negative or she's negative and they're not they're not speaking god promises you need to tell them you've got to watch that because you're going to eat the fruit of your lips. Come that on. is the that is scripture. You're going to is... eat what you say. Yeah. So if you're saying I'm in lack, you're saying all the time I'm I'm weary and I can't do this or I have no strength. You know what? Your body's going to line up. Your situation is going to line up with what you say. You're going to have and eat what you say. That's right. And so it's very, very, very important. We're in such a prophetic time in our lives right now. God, God is listening. The angels are listening. And you, he's waiting for you to be decreeing. It's better to be quiet and not do anything than to speak opposite of what you really want. Come and, on. you know, a lot of times when we're not thinking, we're just kind of going through our day. We, we will say opposite of the desire that's really in our heart. And I, every right. single one of us needs to be more mindful of that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Amen. You, you can't go to the father and ask him to do something for you. And then later on with your words, say, oh, just forget it. Because that's what you're doing when you speak against the thing that you're asking to, to, to come into to, to place. When you're asking for favor, when you're asking for something yes. uh, that, that you're believing for something, you're in faith for something, but then you go, ah, never mind, because that's never going to happen. Well, that's just like saying, Lord, I'm, I'm believing for abundance. I'm believing for my increase. I'm believing for my inheritance to come to me this year. Lord God, I'm asking for the wealth of the heathen to come into my hands of the righteous. Yeah. I'm calling in for the north, the south, the east, the west. Mm-hmm. In the afternoon, you go. I'm just never going to get ahead. Right. It's always going to be the same old thing. Yeah. I'm beat. I'm tired. And I'm just never going to get ahead. It's always you know, something. It's right? all, or easy come, easy go. You better <laughs> not say those yeah, things. I, I pull all those words. Now, that was just an example, Lord. I pull all those words down right now in the name yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ because I it should you. not be coming out of mm-hmm. our mouth. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. So watch the idle words and, and be quick. Be quick to correct each other, especially, you know, when it comes to your health, your finances and this and the um, and family members come in and being saved. And then you just got to be quick to correct each other and help each other. Yeah. If you find yourself contradicting what you're asking God to do for you, repent immediately and say, God, forgive me. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to speak against what I'm asking you to do for me. Amen. Right. I pull those. Because then he'll go, oh, okay. You recognize that you were in doubt. When you should be standing in faith, because earlier you were in faith, right? <laughs> you know what? In those times when you are tired and you are hurting, right, and things it look worse. Look, this is really when your flesh can get out of the way, yeah. and real faith can take over. Come this on. is really when God's faith can infuse with your faith, and come the power on. gift of faith can come in operation yep. and bring forth a miracle in your life. Absolutely. So it is, is so important. You know, I'm gonna we're gonna be posting some decrees yeah. of the word of the Lord uh, for you to really grab a hold of over the next ten days on Facebook. So we encourage you to log on to Facebook every day and get the new decree and, and print it out 
you speak it over your life, mm -hmm. but, um, but, but it'll help you to understand how to begin to making those decrees. So you'll be able to understand how to find it in the word and God, let God help you to write your own decree. Amen. Amen. Over yeah. your situations. We encourage you to do a 12 point prayer focus. Uh, this year, uh, we were doing one for the ministry and we'll be getting out to our intercessors shortly. But really seek the Lord as you're fasting this month for a 12 point prayer focus for your family mm -hmm. and uh, ask the Lord where you can find, you know, at least two scriptures to go along with what you are, what you are decreeing, what you're asking for in your decree. And, and then every day, pull out a, a couple of those and pray them through and decree them. Amen. And so that way, maybe you're doing uh, two a day, six days, you know, six, in six days in the week, every two weeks, you're, you're going through all 12. So let's have a 12 point prayer focus. God, he really does honor that. And when you're praying, you get in the habit of, of seeking the word out over your, over your circumstances and how to you pray the word. Yeah. You absolutely. pray the word. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try to, try to do it at least once a week, all of them. You know, for those that have uh, a deeper prayer lives, yes. they can do all of them in one at one time. But try to do it at least once a week that you're going through the, those 12 points and that you're bringing them before the throne room. That's right. You, you can do it if you do two a day, two a day, yeah. six days a week. But if, if you're just starting out, just then give yourself a two week time period. But it, it would be good to do it in a week's time. Yeah, Again. absolutely. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, hey, let's end in prayer today. Um, and we hope that this message has been an encouragement for you. Lord Father, we just thank you right now for this word. We thank you, Lord God, that you're seeding this word in every person's heart and that you're sealing this word yes. in every hearer's heart, Lord God. We just ask you right now for faith to arise. Yeah. Faith to arise, Lord God. Give them revelation knowledge. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding of what's right and wrong, good and evil. Lord Father, we thank you right now that you are blessing every viewer. Lord God, that you are supernaturally bringing an abundance to their household. Lord Father, we bind up lack. We bind up lack. Lack is part of the curse. And we loose the power of God right now to bring forth increase multiplication. God, you are the God of breakthrough. God, yes. you are the God of multiplication. So we decree multiplication over every viewer today in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, we thank you for joining us with greater glory. We hope that you'll come back and join us again. We're on on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday evenings at 7 and Wednesday evenings at 7, and that's all Eastern Standard Time. We also have another show that goes out live. Absolutely. Tuesdays, 7 p.m., we have Testimony Tuesday. We have wonderful guests that uh, come on with us occasionally with great testimonies of what God has done in and through uh, their lives. And it's just a great encouragement to the body of Christ to hear that what God has done for somebody else, Amen. that it can be done for you as well. Amen. Come on. It's it, not just for the one that it's happened for, uh, but it's for you as well. You know, healings, deliverances, whatever the situation may be in that testimony. So we encourage you to to come on to uh, Hightower Ministries um Facebook page yes, yes. at 7 Amen. p.m. on Tuesdays, Eastern Standard Time, and join us. Praise God. We also have our podcast on Hightower Ministry Podcast on, on Charisma Media Network. And you can find us on Spotify, Apple iTunes, uh, Apple um, Amazon, and uh, take, take a look for us. Look for us at Hightower Ministries Podcast. So um, if you haven't received your book on Unlocking Glory, we encourage you to get a copy of Unlocking Glory this will help you with your, your spiritual growth. The gifts of the spirit, there's a great study of the gifts of the spirit in here. And uh, there's so many testimonies that will increase your faith. It'll help you to understand how to hear God, Amen. how to hear God. There's a, there's a great study on dreams, visions, and similitudes and how God speaks through. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's such great impartation with every chapter. Every chapter is a great teaching and, uh, and you'll, you'll really glean from it. There's so much there. We also have just a release, uh, not, not too long ago, the, uh, the study guide that goes with Unlocking Glory. And if you do them together, it's a wonderful study. And uh, you'll find that God will take you on a wonderful journey. Amen. With him. Amen. So you can get your copies at HightowerMinistry.org or you can look us up on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. That's right. And we encourage you to get in touch with us at HightowerMinistry.org. Let us know how we can pray for you. Yes. And also find out what the ministry is doing. 
Uh, we have events that are posted throughout the year that we're uh, that we're going to be doing, yes. and we encourage you to come out and see us. And then if you if you get on our website and and subscribe, we have a free download. For That's you. right. And uh, it'll really encourage you, and you can send it to your friends. So make sure you get subscribed to it. And also on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell, and you won't miss a show. That's right. Amen. So until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Hightower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for Hightower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcast and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.